Well, the DA leader, John Stierna, is urging his party supporters to protect the Western Cape in what he calls the Doomsday Coalition. Now, he was on the campaign trail in Paul yesterday. This is what he was on the campaign trail at the weekend. And this is what he said. The biggest risk to continued progress, to continued opportunity and building a better future for all of us in this province is complacency and mercenary parties like the PA, like Rizem Zansi, like Good, and like the NCC. Because they're not interested in taking on the ANC. Why aren't they campaigning in Limpopo and the Northwest Province? Why are they coming to the Western Cape? Why are they coming here to try and unseat the only government that created 300,000 jobs? Why are they coming here to the only government that arrested through its LEAP program over 27,000 criminals in the last year. John Sanders is the DA of the DA's leader. John, some would say that the DA is acting illiberal in its comments around where political parties can and cannot campaign in this election. John, good morning. Good morning to you, Lester, and good morning to the listeners. There's nothing illiberal about politically campaigning. There's nothing illiberal about warning people about what has already happened in the Western Cape, where people have A, been complacent, and B, have allowed small parties to split the vote, and who've then given their loyalties to the ANC. We've seen the story played out in Beaufort West. We've seen it played out in Lanesburg. We've seen it played out in Neisner. And we're about to see it playing out in Plettenberg Bay. And I think it is the responsible thing to do to warn voters about what's going to happen based on the track record of what has happened in these other small towns where they now sit without water, without service delivery, with sewage flowing into the, onto their streets and into the Nasna Lagoon, with mountains of rubbish piled up. That is the consequence when people are A, complacent, or B, split the vote and allow the doomsday coalition in through the back door, as we've seen in all of those instances. John, the, the DA has governed for the last 18 years in the city of Cape Town, the last 15 years in the Western Cape. Don't you think it's up to voters to decide for themselves whether the DA has governed in a way that has served them or not? It's up to voters to decide. Of course, Lester, that's what a democracy is all about. But it's up to politicians and the leaders of parties to warn people about what the consequences are if you split the vote and you allow smaller parties in who then allow the ANC and the EFF in, who will then end up destroying the water supply, who end up then destroying the jobs that have been created. Look at Nasdaq now. It is, used to be a centerpiece of tourism in the Western Cape. After just one year of the doomsday coalition rule, you've got dead bodies floating in the drinking water, sewage pumping into the famous Nasna Lagoon, a government that has got no money left to be able to attract tourists to the town, and mountains of rubbish piled up. That is a very serious consequence of people's votes. And I think it's, it's right for politicians to warn people of the consequences of their vote if they do the same thing that the people in Nasna, Lanesburg, Beaufort West, and many other parts of the province have done by creating the conditions that have allowed the a coalition of uh, corruption to come in through the back door. But everyone seems to want to go into coalition with the ANC. Even you have said, if needs be, you're hoping to have that conversation. You're willing to have that, co- that conversation with the ANC. If a small party ticket is called a doomsday coalition, what is a DN ANC coalition called? Well, let me be very clear, Lester. That has been words that have been twisted by set, various sets of journalists. I've said very clearly that my sole focus over the next 54 days is to get the multi-party charter government over the line to get a majority and for the DA to retain its majority here in the Western Cape. That is the best antidote to prevent the Doomsday Coalition from taking place. And I think people should be asking questions. Why are parties like Rise and Zanti, why parties like uh, um, Good and others have remained outside of the only shot that we really have of being able to defeat the ANC at a national level, and that's through the multi-party charter, which remains six points behind the ANC only. And perhaps if those parties spent their efforts in assisting the multi-party charter instead of attacking the parties in the multi-party charter, um, I think that we would be making that job a lot easier. Instead, parties like Mr. Zibi's Razum Zanti uh, is making that job a lot harder. And I think there's going to be some questions that need to be asked after the election about you know, what, what role did you play 
in helping to get the multi-party charter over the line. It remains, outside of the ANC, the largest voting bloc in the country, and it's working every single day to ensure that we get that majority. Uh, John, my final question to you, the results of the 2021 local government election and the 2019 provincial election showed that the Democratic Alliance bled votes to particularly the Freedom From Plus. Why aren't you campaigning or trying to de-campaign a Freedom From Plus campaign for the 2024 elections, or simply is it because they're part of your multi-party charter? Well, of course, the parties that are part of the multi-party charter have agreed that we are going to work together. There's no point having opposition parties attacking each other. They should be working together. Now, Mr. Zibi has steadfastly refused to cooperate with the multi-party charter, despite several invitations to come and talk to us. He's resisted that opportunity. And so the multi-party charter has, for the first time in 30 years, been able to put on the table a working opposition bloc. They are working together to not only unseat the ANC, but as you would have noticed over the last uh, month, have started to release joint policies, joint plans about what we intend to do. Now, Mr. Zibi has got presidential ambitions. and You'll hear him speak about those nonetheless. But how on earth do you go to become president of the Republic of South Africa with two, two seats in the National Assembly? And that is precisely why the, being part of the multi-party charter makes so much sense for opposition parties, because we can then get the best and the brightest around a potential cabinet table after the election and work together to achieve that. Why would you be working against the multi-party charter when it represents South Africa's very best hope of being able to defeat the ANC at a national level and put in place an alternative government that's going to actually be able to start writing a different story for South Africa? Now, Mr. Zibi, I see of the weekend, was calling me a crybaby. Let me tell you, the only babies that are going to be crying are those that get born in the Western Cape with an ANC EFF um, a PA government here because their provincial hospitals will look exactly like the provincial hospitals in the Eastern Cape, the Northern Cape and Limpopo. John, hopefully yeah. I can get you and Zongezi if you're in Cape Town at the same time in our studio to, to flesh it out face-to-face here on here. But Zongezi, Zibi, unfortunately we can't have a report day between you and John right now. But your immediate response and reaction to John's DNA is at the weekend, Zongezi. Uh, thanks very much for having me on, Lester. So, look, I think that John and the DA have now resorted to racist dog whistles uh, against us. In fact, it is not just this past weekend. They have been telling potential donors and, uh, and other people that we are a radical party, we want expropriation without compensation. And this links to your question you asked about the Freedom Front Plus, uh, Lester, because what they are trying to do is they're trying to win back the portion of white voters that are leaving the DA, either for the Freedom Front Plus or had voted for the ANC in 2019 because of Cyril Ramaphosa. Those people are not coming back to the DA. And they are using Swart Hefar politics in order to retain it. That is what is really going on. They can see it in the patterns, in the numbers, and that is why they're focusing on us and not on these other political parties that you're talking about. Uh, but Sangeza, is, 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 is it is it the case of... By, by his comment uh, uh, mm. the other day. And as I, as I have been by the active disinformation they've been peddling about us. Is it really about dethroning the ANC at all costs if even the Democratic Alliance says, well, if needs be for some sort of stability coalition, we will work with him? Because I, I, it feels that if I if I look at all the parties that, that are talking about coalitions, all of them would say we would consider aligning or, or working, cooperating with the ANC if the circumstances are right and an agreement was reached. Everyone wants to to be in coalition with the ANC, it seems. Let's, let's talk about what voters want, and that is what has guided our thinking around the multi-party charter. The holy grail of South African politics is to win the majority of voters who, whether they vote for the ANC or not, have the ANC as the center of their political thinking. It is not possible to do this under the DA's direction. In a charter or coalition arrangement arranged by John Steenhaven and Helen Zille, who enjoy very little credibility with those voters, had those voters wanted to accept their leadership, they would not have left them as an option in 2019 and 2021, as you said. 
What upsets John and the DA is that we've chosen to chart our own path. Now, let me address the coalition issue. It is silly and arrogant for anyone to suggest that if you want to go into a coalition with me after the election, do not contest me before the election. There is no way in the world where there is a coalition arrangement in Belgium, in Germany, in the Netherlands, where the parties agree not to contest one another so that they can go into a coalition together. The DA has been in power for 15 years in the Western Cape. The people in the Cape Flats, the people in Kailicha, in Langa, Kukuletu, in Manenberg and so on, demand some accountability from the failures of the DA as a government in the Western Cape. It is undemocratic and illiberal to suggest that because there's a big ho-ho called the ANC, the DA must not be held accountable. That's not democracy. So, Songezo Zibi, Rise and leader, really appreciate your time. Hopefully, I can get you and John in the same room, hopefully on our show, and we can flesh out things face-to-face here.